Good afternoon, students. Today we are going to uh, take up chapter number three of business studies. Okay, and uh, we'll be starting about the uh, private sector, public sector, and how government sector is going to um, help the two sectors. Along with that, government uh, will will be also knowing about the departmental undertaking and statutory corporations, as well as we'll be uh, knowing about the government companies. Okay. In addition to that, we'll also study about um, multinational corporations and uh, joint ventures as well as public-private partnership. Okay, so these are the basic concepts we are going to study in this particular chapter. Okay, this is the highlight of the chapter. So let's start. Um, so in the beginning, we should know what is the basic role uh, of the public sector. Okay, this is our chapter. And we should know the basic role of our uh, public sector. Okay, so at the time of independence, it was a great duty of public sector to hold up the economic activities and control the activities. Okay, control all the activities. Okay. So let's start uh, that particular part that is uh, the role of public sector was defined at the time of independence okay and um, a great deal of duty was uh, being assigned to the public sector they had to do a lot of work like um, in the construction of buildings then construction of roads then construction of um, many many organizations and institutions that were formed at a time so they were involved in lots of constructional activities and a great deal of uh, pressure was there on the public sector okay due to which what happened is that um, many uh, but the support was not there to that extent okay that is what uh, was the main problem of public sector at the time so due to that what happened is that with the time frame many many of the public sector became weak and uh, it became sick industries okay many of the public sector organizations became sick industries or organizations and later on many of the organizations were closed down some of the organizations were um, helped with the government to some extent. The size of the organization was uh, minimized. Okay, so there were that that was the uh, situation. So one of those example you can see in the Hindustan paper mill of uh, Panjgram. That is also an example of that. Okay, so uh, that was the basic problem that the public sector was playing. Okay, so the the role was assigned to public sector because of the reason that there were very very few private organizations after the independence and most of the private organizations they were concentrating only on the urban area okay urban area and they are they were concentrated to earn profit okay to earn profit but public sector was not formed just to earn profit they were formed to serve the society, to develop the country, and the main motive was to develop the rural India. Okay, because only few population, only say 10-20 percent uh, of the population was residing in the um, uh, urban area. Okay, more than 80 percent of the population were there in the rural India. Okay, so the development was required. That is why the job was being assigned to public sector. Okay. So let's come to the basic part now that is a private sector, public sector enterprise. What are the different types of public sector enterprises? So the basic type of public enterprises that we can see in our country is country R. Okay. That is a um, first one is departmental undertaking. The next one is public corporation. The third one is government company. Okay. We can see three types of public sector enterprises in our country. These are departmental undertaking public corporations and government company. Let's study one by one. First one, departmental undertaking. Now, when we are talking about a departmental undertaking, okay, what it is actually? What is the meaning of departmental undertaking? Departmental undertaking is a part of the government organization which will work for the government, okay? It's a public sector enterprise and it is going to work like a government department. Okay, it's nothing but a government department. It is not separated from the government. Okay, it is directly related to the government department. Like you can know about the railways. Now railways also they are involving little bit of private. Otherwise, it was totally under government control. Then defense, post, the posting and telegram. Okay, broadcasting. Then telephone, uh, telephone services. These were the. These are the actually common government 
departments which are having depart which are having separate department for the individual thing like railway is having a railway department railway minister will be there he will be monitoring the uh, railway department it is a departmental undertaking okay so that means departmental undertaking is a public sector enterprise which is directly controlled by the government and it is a part of government department okay direct control will be there so what are the basic features that we can see in the departmental undertaking first one overall control of government the department itself is nothing but a indispensable or inseparable part of government so that is why every control all the activities are being controlled by government no separate no separate legal entity it doesn't have any separate identity from the government its identity is the government itself okay then fully financed by government it is 100% financed by government government will uh, take care of all the activities in the departmental undertaking revenue uh, gets deposited in government treasury whatever the revenue is generated like what are the revenue generated from uh, railway whatever whether it is a fine or ticket or any other carriage expenses what it means carriage charges whatever the government is earning out of this will be going in the government treasury okay then uh, operated by civil servants government organizations there is a departmental undertakings are operated by ias officers or civil servants who are being uh, appointed after um, after the passing of upsc or such uh, civil um, certain civil service examinations okay after getting qualified there then only they will be appointed as a they will be appointed as a um, government officials and they will be operating this departmental undertaking then direct control of concerned ministry as i told you the railway minister is the concerned person of the uh, concerned person of the railway department right so in the same way if if anything is happening if anything is uh, happening good or bad directly it will be controlled by the concerned ministry that means the concerned minister will be responsible for that okay railway department is for example railway department is directly controlled by the railway minister okay so that is a example of direct control then coming to the next one can we uh, can be sued by the procedure of suing the government that means um, whenever required it can be asked why it is happening so okay why it is happening so what is the reason that the government is uh, um, not able to do the things properly or what is the reason why the government is doing so well in this particular sector everything every all detail need to be all detail need to be uh, answered by the concerned ministry okay in the parliament then uh, comes the next one what are the advantages we can get from departmental undertaking first is uh, <clears throat> effective control is there since the government is there that means government is going to look into the activities so they can hire qualified persons civil servants are all very very qualified people highly efficient to become an ias officer it's a, it's really a very very tough job right india's best um, or high, uh, what to say the most competitive exam right so that type of knowledge the person who is having will be obviously having a very good quality control activities he can control the activity very nicely okay and the quality of control will be very very good then comes the next one easy formation departmental undertaking system need to be formed by the government so they can form it according to the need whenever there will be need they can form the de uh, departmental undertaking easily because of the reason that everything is under their control under government control so the laws rules regulation everything is under the control of the government so they can form a departmental undertaking easily required uh, on the basis of the requirement of the country then accountability uh, the record of all the departmental undertaking are account are need to be shown or they have to present it in the parliament right that is why it is very clear that there will be no manipulation no um, fraud and all okay although this can happen but the chances are less why because you have to present all the account in front of the parliament in the parliament you have to present it in the parliament if all the all the people are the representative of the all the ministers and all whoever are there they are the representative representatives of general public so general public indirectly they are getting the information from there so then uh, optimum utilization of resources when government will take up um, any activity what they do is that they try to make a maximum use of those things okay like railway 
railway they have got uh, the railway service even in the corner of the country okay everywhere possible wherever possible they are trying to uh, connect the country with the railway system okay they are making the optimum use of it how now if the railway con railway is being connected to the, even the remotest area what will happen from there you can get the raw material regarding any industries and all okay or even people can move around from there to other place so that there will be availability of labor availability of raw material all the things will be uh, available in the country so then secrecy the secrecy is like uh, there are many many decisions which need to be taken beforehand or need to be carefully monitored even there are some faults and all faults and all not fraud okay faults and all which many times we don't come to know but since the government has having full control they within the department itself they solve the problem okay if people come to know they will panic so many times it happens that they solve uh, within themselves okay within the organization so that type of benefits and all can be seen in the departmental undertaking the secrecy of the that is a secret can be maintained then public revenue okay uh, public revenue means the income that is being generated from departmental undertaking goes to the revenue of the government and and, uh, and what happened that indirectly comes to the benefit of the public so that is why it is a source of public revenue then what are the disadvantages we can find in the departmental undertaking the first disadvantage that we can find is it is uh, very inflexible inflexible means the flexibility is not there why because it is being strictly ruled by the um, government organization so many times they will not take many many good decisions which can be beneficial why you know because of the reason that uh, it might influence or it might have negative impact and that might have uh, again an influence on their um, parties or their election so that type of um, fear is always there okay that is why they will they will always have that um, the flexibility they will not use that flexibility okay there will be inflexibility in operation they will not be free to take any decision the lack of motivation lack of motivation means they um, okay the department don't have the full autonomy or full power to use all the resources okay they will not have full power to use the resources or the or whatever there is there they will not use it in the full ex, full of extent okay that is why what happens that the uh, they, they don't have the uh, interest of earning more and more profit that is lacking okay uh, and uh, on the other hand they will also not go for promotion of the activities will not take more initiative to earn more profit why because they know that whatever profit will be earned need to be passed through the parliament and there will be decision that whether sh shall we use it shall we not use it you are doing all the labor but the decision will be taken by many many people so th what happens is that you will you will not have that autonomy that is what is given the second point and third point also there is lack of financial autonomy the the financial you do you have lots of money but you cannot use it according to your wish you have to get the permission from many many people there will be someone against you there will be someone in favor of you so that financial autonomy is not there okay that is what given the third point also to number two and number three is quite related then number four inefficient management the management of any government department you can find that they are lacking efficiency it's not there and they are not efficient they are efficient to get a government job you know it's very difficult you have to pass through many many tests and all but after getting the job people forget their knowledge and they just uh, rely on their salary this is the biggest disadvantage there are people who work hard and make um, most of the salary okay make most of the salary means make use of the salary what the, whatever the government is paying them they are paying the employee will also pay back to the government but there are more than um, there suppose if there are 10% of the people working for uh, the development of the country there are 90 percent who are not doing that they are only just uh, sitting and waiting for the salary to come and relaxing okay they don't use the they don't have a proper management so that is what happens that it it, um, it creates a negative and uh, vibe in the departmental undertaking then next is red tapism and bureaucracy red tapism and bureaucracy refers to delay in decision making okay delaying the decisions the uh, this, uh, this, whatever decision you want to take in the department you are taking that to be uh, that that requires a certain procedure certain administrative formalities requ are required okay and the, all paperwork required quite a few um, 
complicated procedures which will ultimately lead to delay in the decisions okay then next uh, we will study about the public corporations so <clears throat> Public corporations, also known as statutory corporations, are those organizations, those public sector uh, organizations which are being formed by a special act. Okay, they are formed for a special purpose for a, uh, passing a special act. Okay, like um, for example, you can say State Bank of India, Life Insurance Corporation of India. They are formed with a special act to do a special activity in the country. Okay, or ONGC. A specific purpose is there like for ngc the specific purpose is extraction of oil and uh, extraction of mineral from uh, beneath the earth and uh, and making it the oil in or uh, uh, other product from the particular uh, extracted minerals whatever they extract okay, they can they can make use of that then uh, indian airlines the state bank of india all these things are all those are formed with the special act of the parliament okay then coming to the features, what are the features of public sector corporation? First, formed by passing an act. Okay, this uh, public sector organizations are formed for a particular purpose, passing a special act for that particular purpose. Okay, like um, for example, LIC. LIC has been formed to take up the uh, insurance of people. Okay, so that after their death or on a certain that the people, the family members of the particular person don't lose the financial stability of their family okay so that is what the main objective was that is the formula formation by uh, that is what the reason for which lic was formed okay and this was the procedure where the for where the lic was formed by passing a special act then uh, coming to the next one control by government the public corporations are totally controlled by the government and organizations okay government government will be controlling the total activity of public corporation the separate legal entity it is having a separate identity from the government okay it is since it is formed by a special act it will have a separate identity but the control lies in the government then managed by board of directors there will be people who will be running the um, public corporation board of director will be appointed some will be appointed by the government some will be uh, appointed by those investors so there will be people appointed by uh, appointed generally they are appointed by the government itself okay they will be running the public corporation then powers and objective are defined in the act only whatever the power is there whatever the objective whatever the things they are going to do everything will be defined in the objective at the time of formulation then own staff they will have their own staff okay government will have uh, their own staff for working that they will be um, monitoring them controlling them and the appointment also will be done by the government itself then administrative autonomy they will have the administrative actually all these are parent administrative autonomy and all is a uh, paper words because they don't actually happen so government or in the public organization it is said that administrative autonomy is being provided to the board of directors to do and take decision as they like as the need is but actually it doesn't happen okay the next one is accountability accountable to parliament they will also have to uh, show all their details in the parliament whatever the profit is there whatever the expense is there all the details have to have to be presented in the parliament then what are the advantages of public company or public corporations public corporations are having the advantage of first is administrative autonomy as i told you these are paper words but uh, still administrative control is there in the hands of the board of directors they can take the decision as and when required okay then you need to consult the government every time then quick decision since the board of directors are free to take the decision free to uh, take the activities of the organization as they like they can quickly make the decision without passing the decision in the parliament and all like department is undertaking right then efficient staff the, the staff of public corporations are being generally appointed after certain uh, evaluation certain examination so they are generally efficient okay then service motive the basic motive of starting a public corporation is to serve the society that is why they are motivated with service service motivated okay they are certain service motivated then the next one is professional management professional management means its board of greater constitutes of the business experts and the representative from the many many groups okay the public corporations the board of directors of the public corporations are generally business experts and are representative of 
various groups like labor uh, labor union group or consumer um, nominated right uh, consumer nominates means uh, those are representing the consumer and all that is why you will get those expert people are there to see the public corporations then coming to disadvantage now what is the disadvantage we can see the first one is lack of initiative lack of initiative means the initiative in the uh, you can see this feature common in all the three public sectors because why because the reason that public as i already told you public employees uh, public sector employees once they get the job they are very secured with that they don't uh, bother what is going to happen and what is the loss the government is going to suffer and public is going to suffer right so they are just concerned about them themselves so that is why the lack of initiative means they are not taking the trouble of uh, helping people taking the initiative of uh, making or giving benefit to people so that is the lack of initiative is that they don't take initiative in doing the work then theoretical autonomy theoretical autonomy means uh, the control as i already told you financial control or you can talk about the administrative control although there is autonomy given to the public sector corporation but in practical they need to consult every time the government organizations even the political parties will have their influence they will have their words so those things are also there okay so that is why you can say that the theory, uh, whatever you you find in a particular public corporations it is just theoretical freedom it's in practical it is not so then unfair practices unfair practices means in a departmental undertaking you will find many many frauds being happening many manipulations being done okay even the pen, pen and paper what is there in the office many of the employees government employees they take it at home for their children printers in the office is being used by uh, is used for printing the personal papers and personal documents of their children these are the common practices most of the employees they do okay so these are the things uh, actually it's not you, you cannot say that it is illegal but it is unfair you should not use the uh, public property for your personal work right so unfair practices is being done not only that under the table activities are also there that is uh, giving bribe and all right that is also there now technique has changed of taking the bribe now it has been changed but uh, it is there then uh, rigid structure structure sorry the the structure of a public corporation is very rigid Okay, very rigid means the objects uh, that is the objective for which it is formed. The powers of the public corporations are defined in the act. Okay, and this can be amended only by amending the statute of the act. Means after the um, uh, act has been amended, after the act uh, permits you, then only you can go for implementing it properly. Okay, that is why there's a lot of rigidity. Means flexibility is not there, right? now coming to the third public sector corporation that is the government company uh, what is the government company let's first of all try to understand what is the government company a government company is those company okay or refers to those companies where the government is having at least 51% of investment okay paid up share capital means the total capital of the company should be having at least 51% share from the government means at least out of 151 rupees should be invested by the government okay that that means the whole uh, that is the control should be in the government hand then only you can say that it's a government company okay um <coughs> then the features of government company what are the features of government actually examples in the examples of government company you can say that steel authority of india then uh, hindustan machine tools these are the examples of uh, government companies now let's come to the features of government company first one compulsory registration your company like any other company needs to be registered okay in under the company okay and the companies act with you have to register with the register of the company and now the latest act is 9, uh, 2013 right so you have to register your company under the act 2013 companies act 2013 clear okay? then the ownership the ownership of the government company is wholly or partly owned by the government clear okay? either the government will hold, uh, uh, have a full control or part control will be there fine <clears throat> then managed by board of directors the management of the uh, government company is done by those uh, board of directors who are nominated by the government okay and other shareholders also those who are the investors in the company in simple words either it can be government 
it can it it will be only government in many cases or it will be government and public okay so they will whoever the investors are there they will appoint the board of directors and those those people who are going to manage the uh, government company right separate legal identity then uh, a government company has got separate identity from its owners okay like the like any company government company is also having a separate identity okay then the next one uh, ministerial control uh ministerial control means actually what happens is that the government company is always a subject to the ministerial control okay they will always have to listen to the concerned minister who is there in the power okay and that is why many many issues are generally um going in a negative direction because of this ministerial control then next comes the financial autonomy the government companies although it is told that they are enjoying a, uh, enjoying the financial autonomy but uh, let's see how far it is it's actually in the practical that's uh, that's not that's not 100% okay the financial autonomy means they can borrow loans from outsiders they can um raise money whenever required so the financial autonomy means they have got the freedom to raise money as and when, as and when required even they take they can borrow money from banks or through debentures then <coughs> efficient staff in the government company like any other public sector the staffing that is the recruitment procedure is very very difficult okay very difficult to crack so that is why you will find that many people who are uh, working in a government company are very efficient although they don't work very efficiently but they are efficient then next comes the accountability accountability means the government uh, companies are also accountable to the ministry of the concerned department okay all annual reports need to be presented in the state assembly clear let's see the advantages of government company now the first advantage is administrative autonomy okay there is freedom given to the government company that they can do their activities as they like that is the board of directors who are appointed they are going to see the activities in a government company and whenever required a suitable change can be introduced or can be done by the board of directors okay obviously many times if it is a big decision then they have to take the permission from the concerned stakeholders that whoever the investors are there okay then uh, greater flexibility uh, the, sorry, the second one is efficient staff the people who are working in a government company are very very uh, efficient okay they are highly many times they are highly educated most of the employees are highly educated and highly efficient with the activities they are involved okay that is why a bigger advantage is there in a government a company then coming to the next one greater flexibility greater flexibility means the government company is having more flexibility than any other public sector company because public sector organizations why because it is totally run by the uh, shareholders of the company who are the investors in the company okay most of the decision are taken in a general meeting and uh, government interference is less although not 100 per it's, it's not 100 percent true but many times they have got the freedom to take the decision okay that is why it's all greater flexibility not 100 percent flexibility but they have more flexibility okay greater flexibility that is why it's all greater flexibility then then the next one collaboration the government company can avail and accommodate managerial skill technical know-how or expertise from other public sectors also okay private sectors also okay they can uh, collaborate collaborate means join together with private sector and they can take help from them regarding any technical knowledge know-how or managerial skill like that okay then comes the next one that is the demerits of government company what are the disadvantages first is autonomy only in the paper okay all paper only means what the words what i told just now that they are having the freedom but not fully that is very very true in any public sector because whenever there will be government investment whoever the concerned ministers and all they feel that it is their money they forget that it's a general public money right so this is that is why they will always have the interruption they will have their power and due to that the government officials also don't want to lose their job don't want to be in trouble so they just ignore those things and due to which what happens is that the government company don't have so much of performance uh, performance in um, practical things okay they just they are there they are performing but not compete 
not enough they are not in a position enough to compete with the private sector right you can see here in the government schools how many of the students are interested in going to government school the one whose parents are having little money they always prefer private the one who is not having they don't have any option they only go for government schools but there are places in india itself where people run after government schools okay so that depends on what the political uh, situation is there in your place then comes the next one board packed with government representatives most of the investment like 51 percent investment is done by government right at least 51 percent so what happens that government will have their own people there so it will always if you, if you have their own people that means they will have their influence on the activities of a uh, of the government company right so directly or indirectly government will have the influence then comes the political interference as i already told you if it is public sector that means it's it's like a servant to the political leaders the political leader forgets that they are the servants of common people okay and uh, they just think themselves about everything and what happens is that ultimately they influence this government companies or departmental undertaking or um, statutory corporations and in, in all these influence directly or indirectly impacts the activities of the particular concerned organization and for the purpose for which it is formed is not served okay so that is why the biggest disadvantage in india we find is the political interference is there okay so coming to the next uh, this is how we are ending the government um, the public sector now we will study a little about the government companies the differences between the department are taking public sector on, on the public corporations and the government company you will you will have to prepare on your own because it's the same concept what you have studied now that is the part of your exam and your book also it is a syllabus it's a part of your syllabus as well as difference between the public sector and private sector also you have to study now we will go to the next one it is multinational corporations or government or global enterprises global enterprises or multinational corporations as the name is suggesting what is the uh, what do you understand from it? it it refers to those organizational institutions which are run which are run globally okay which are run globally that means they are the organizations or institutions which are not working in only in one country they will have more than one country to work that the activities of their business will be uh, more in more than one country right then coming to like for example you can say um, yartel yartel is also operating in more than one country coca cola okay or uh, any branded product you get most of the branded product they are operating in more than one country like tata is also having uh, operation in more than one country okay <clears throat> then um, mahindra and mahindra is also having operation in more than one country so that is that all these are global enterprises or government companies okay global companies not government companies global companies right then what are the features the global companies are having first it's giant in size okay giant in size what is the meaning of that giant in size means giant in size means it's very very large in size okay a government company or sorry global company is huge in size they will have operation in more than one country means obviously it will, it will be huge in size clear okay. the resources are in uh, crores and crores, hundreds of crores okay the machines and also will be in huge size the uh, the premises the boundary also will be huge size the activity also will be in uh, in large num number okay so that is why it is called giant size of organization then centralized control centralized control means although a global company will operate in more than one country but the control lies in the place which is the place of origin like uh, tata if it is operating in bangladesh or operating in sri lanka or operating in america but the control will be in india itself okay they will have the total control of the activities activities in the place of origin that is india itself clear okay? then expansion of market territory in a global company they will always have the eye on expanding the market now if Tata is operating in uh, America. They will have always eye on Africa. They will always have uh, eye on other uh, other countries also, so where they can expand their business. Okay, so always they have eye on the expansion of market territory. The expanding activity goes on. Then product innovation in global market. Global company means you have to compete in the global market. 
So when you are competing in the global market, your product should be always up to date. That means it should be having, it should have the latest technology, latest of uh, method of um, um, latest method, latest technology, uh, or you can say it should be fashionable. It should be, it, it should be in simple words to the standard where there is always encouragement of innovation. There should be innovation in your activity. Otherwise your business cannot survive in the global market. Then oligopolistic power. Oligopoly means what? Power in the hands of few companies only. Okay. Power in the few hands. Uh, power power will be confined it to only few hands. So oligopolistic power means this government, global companies generally have oligopolistic power. Means few of the government companies will control many of the activities. Okay. They control many of the activities in a place. Like if Tata, if you say it is its activity will be such huge that it will have control on many, many activities. Okay, and there will be only few competitors for this type of organizations. Then advanced technology. Advanced technology means the technology that is used in the global company will be highly advanced. As I already told you in the innovation, product innovation, the technology is very, very hi-fi type. They will not have ordinary technology because you cannot compete in the global market using the ordinary technology. Then come the marketing strategy. The marketing strategy for the marketing purpose, they use, uh, they make expenditure of crores and crores of rupees. They hire international branded people, international branded people like Virat Kohli, or you can say Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal, like this type of people, they will uh, um, hire in the organization as a brand ambassador and will uh, encourage more and more um what we say advertising and all with them okay so this will have a great influence so the marketing strategy at an international level will be also of international uh, of international standard okay that means the people that who are hired for that the the investment that is done for advertisement the promotion will be also very costly okay and as well as should be done in a very efficient way then foreign collaboration global enterprises generally do their business with a collaboration with those people or with those companies where they are going to start a business. Like uh, Suzuki, when they wanted to start the car market in India, they collaborated with Maruti and started Maruti Suzuki. And then they separated and now Maruti is having their own uh, production and Suzuki is having their own production. Okay, that is an example of foreign collaboration. Now let's come to joint venture. The next point, what is joint venture? Joint venture means joining of two ventures. Joining of two ventures means joining of two firms. Okay, so whenever two or more than two firms join together, that is called joint venture. Okay, two or more than two firms join together to form a partnership business, that is called joint venture. So, what are the basic features? First is increased resource and capacity. The capacity and uh, resources of joint venture will be more when more than one firm joined to, okay when two or more than two firms join together what will happen the capacity and ability of that firm will be more right then access to new market and distribution network okay access to new market and distribution network means the uh, joint venture will have new market why because when you are joining with any other business suppose you are you are doing activity in assam now if you are joining your business activity with anyone in delhi what will happen? You will have new market and the person in Delhi will have a new market in Assam. You will have new market in Delhi, right? So that will have a help in distributing your product and, as, and getting more and more customer, right? Then access to technology. The technology that your person uh, with whom you join the activity, you are going to get his technology and he will get your technology. So you will have better technology also. Innovation. Your idea and his idea will match together and you can get more innovation, more development in your market. Okay, or in your uh, business organization, how to deal with the customer, how to uh, control the customer, how control means to bring the customer confined it to your product only. Okay, so how to do all these things? You can have better idea and better development with the uh, with the help of joint venture. Then low cost of production. If you are joining together with another firm, what will happen? Your size of business will uh, will be large. Whenever the production, whenever the size of the business will be large, production will be more. And if you produce more, there will be economies of scale. That means, economies of scale means what? Producing more at a low cost. Okay, producing more at a low cost. This you can easily understand 
like uh, if you are cooking food for two person okay the expenses that you are going to make right that will be okay that will be almost little bit more for five people if you cook okay if you are cooking for five people the expenses that you are making like it will be 10 rupees but if you are cooking for two people the expenses might be 8 rupees okay it will be like this why you know you can just take the example in, uh, in your kitchen and you can just try that you will have it will help you okay uh, the next one is uh, but make sure that you know cooking don't, don't just simply enter the kitchen otherwise it will be a great trouble the next one establish brand name establish brand name means joint venture will help you to establish new brand name like two firms joining together a and b joining together beginning bringing a new brand name of their product a b okay it can be anything okay like and just i just gave an example of that so these are the advantages you can get from joint venture now let's come to our last point or last topic that is ppp public private partnership now what is public private partnership if we talk about public private partnership it is answering the on the question itself in the, uh, the the answer is itself in the question the public and the private sector they are joining together in a partnership to do the activities okay that is called ppp that is public private partnership it is also called pq that is p to the power c or p3 clear or triple p clear the example can be like any uh, any of the private hospital joining together with the public hospital and they are using the public um, public equipments and the facilities of private services right public services means private services means they will have good services and private public technology means they will have high highly sophisticated technology so if they join together they can provide very good um, medical facility in a place right so that will that is an example of public private partnership clear so let's go with the features of that first is the contract between the public sector and the private sector the public sector and the private sector there is a private party they will join together they will have a contract between them that we are going to take up the activity it can be for a definite purpose it can be for a general purpose right it can be for a definite period it can be for a longer period also it can be for any longer period also right so they will have their contract where they will um, have certain agreement like who is going to bear how much the expenses losses everything all the agreement how the control will be done all the details of the activity can be written there that is the contract between the public and the private sector uh, private sector then next comes the cost of using service due to ppp what happens that co the cost of services okay the cost of using the service is generally borne by the public sector okay because uh, the public sector can invest more and what happens is that the services of uh, the product service the product cost is borne by public sector and the service cost is borne by private sector in this way what happens is that both efficiency you can get in the ppp there is a public private partnership clear that is the uh, what i gave an example of the hospital a uh, uh, highly sophisticated technology can be purchased by public sector and uh, medical facilities medical uh, services like nurses and doctor all these things can be hired from the private sector so in that way you can get better doctors better um, nurses and services right and very good quality of medical equipments also yeah then coming to the next one provision of capital subsidy generally when you take up any uh, ppp you will have capital subsidies being provided okay projects that aim at creating public goods in infrastructural sector the government may provide a capital subsidy in the form of one time grant to make it more attractive to the private sector okay and uh, in some cases government may provide revenue subsidy like uh, tax benefit or um, whatever loan you have taken on that sub, uh, sub government might give subsidy of 30% 20% so that if you are taking 100 rupees loan you will repay only 80 rupees okay like this of subsidy also is provided that is a provision of capital subsidy then comes the next one problem with ppp what are the basic problems we can see with the ppp is that many times the uh, the main problem which you can see in the ppp project is that private investor obtain a rate of return okay that was higher than the government bond rate 
even though most of the income risk is borne by the public sector right that means whenever you start a ppp most of the things will be invested by public the huge investment will be done by public sector but what happens that major of the share is being taken by private sector so that is a problem with the ppp so uh, this is how we are ending this chapter now if you have any doubt regarding this chapter you can clarify please go through the chapter nicely and uh, all the best for your examination okay we will end up the class here take care all of you for any doubt call me at any time you want okay be free for that okay then bye bye take care